So this might just be the scariest video that you'll see all day. It's footage of the world's most advanced stealth fighter, the F-35, loading not one, but two variable-yield nuclear gravity bombs into its internal weapons bays, allowing this one supersonic jet to unleash nearly seven times the nuclear hellfire dropped on Hiroshima by a B-29 bomber back in 1945, and all without ever appearing on enemy radar. Now, this footage was captured in August of this year and was just released by the Department of Energy about a week ago now. The F-35 was first certified to carry nuclear weapons back in October of 2023, but testing has continued to make sure these new B-61 TAC-12 nuclear bombs can be carried and deployed by the fighter in any type of combat situation. Now, the B-61 TAC-12 is a variable yield nuclear gravity bomb that can be set to detonate at four different blast settings, 0.3 kilotons, 1.5 kilotons, 10 kilotons, and its maximum yield of 50 kilotons. Now, 0.3 kilotons might not sound like all that much, but oh boy, it is. That smallest blast setting is equivalent to detonating right around 600,000 pounds of dynamite on a target, and it's more than 27 times the blast output of the world's largest non-nuclear bomb, America's GBU-43 MOAB, or mother of all bombs. Now set to maximum at 50 kilotons, well then we're talking about dropping 100 million pounds of TNT on your enemy's forehead. And again, the F-35 is capable of carrying two of these weapons internally while maintaining its stealth profile. And to be totally honest, it could probably deliver a lot more nuclear hellfire than even that. The first production B-61 TAC-12 nuclear bomb was delivered to the U.S. Air Force back in 2021, with somewhere between 400 and 500 of these weapons delivered since. But they're not exactly new nuclear bombs. Instead, this weapon is considered a lifetime extension program for the older B-61 TAC-3, TAC-4, TAC-7, and TAC-11 series of bombs, which had the same basic dimensions and produced variable yields that were known to reach at least as high as 340 kilotons, and according to some reports, maybe even as high as 400. Now, it stands to reason that some of these older bombs may still be in the stockpile, and if so, the F-35 may be able to deliver them as well, though any such certification has not been publicly disclosed. But even these comparatively massive yields actually still represent fairly small nuclear blasts as compared to the doomsday-style weapons employed by nations like Russia, who claims to have ICBMs in service with maximum yields as big as 50 megatons. That's 50 thousand kilotons, and has at times claimed its nuclear torpedoes, called Poseidon, might carry warheads as large as 100 megatons, though they did later walk that claim back. Now, America's ICBMs, on the other hand, only carry single warheads with yields of between 300 and 475 kilotons, more than 100 times smaller than Russia's biggest weapons. And that's actually for pretty good reason. You see, American guidance systems have consistently been better than their Russian counterparts since, well, the heyday of the Cold War. And that has allowed Uncle Sam to rely on smaller nuclear weapons to achieve strategic success simply because the more accurate your weapon, the smaller the blast you need to destroy the target. Russian guidance systems aren't as accurate, so they rely on much larger weapons to produce a much larger blast radius so they can ensure they actually hit their intended targets. It's also worth noting that America spends more on maintaining its nuclear arsenal alone than Russia spends on its entire military combined. So by relying on fewer massive weapons for nuclear deterrence, Moscow may be able to spend a bit less on weapons maintenance. But by now you might be asking, why bother with nuclear bombs at all in the 21st century when ICBMs and submarine-launched SLBMs can already hold the whole world at risk? Well, the answer really comes down to diplomatic posturing and providing leaders with a variety of options. 
ICBMs and SLBMs are ever-present threats, but they can't really be used to force an adversary to reconsider its aggressive actions in the geopolitical theater. But deploying nuclear bombs to, say, the European theater alongside stealth fighters that can deliver them creates the opportunity to send a very strong message without actually launching any nuclear weapons. And, of course, nuclear bombs delivered by bombers and fighters also represent one-third of the American nuclear triad, effectively ensuring that even if an enemy managed to somehow incredibly sink all of America's nuclear submarines and destroy all of its ICBMs in a nuclear first strike, well, Uncle Sam could still ruin their day with a nuclear reprisal of his own.